Alright, what's up guys? Today I wanted to talk about Overwatch 2 when it uh, someday inevitably comes out and how I think it's going to do just because Overwatch, the first one, meant a lot to me. It's what got me into YouTube. And, uh, you know, I just feel like this game is not looking like it's gonna do too hot. Let's talk about it. Alright, so before we get into it, I just want to clarify that I hope that this video makes me look really stupid in a couple years when Overwatch 2 is the biggest game to ever exist. The first Overwatch was literally what made me want to start making YouTube videos. My first channel that had any success was about Overwatch. So like, I hope that the game does incredible. You know, that being said, there's just some stuff going on that makes me think that Overwatch 2 might be dead on arrival. The first reason I kind of think Overwatch 2 might not be as successful or the first one or as successful as Blizzard's hoping for is the fact that, like, we still don't have a solid release date. Listen, I understand games get delayed quite often. That being said, if the trend of recent games that release after being delayed is anything to look at, like, it tends to be delays don't really fix major issues. And as for why there's been so many delays in Overwatch 2, a lot of the reasoning that developers are talking about seem kind of dumb. Overwatch 2 producer claims CEO contributed to delays with months of lost development time. Basically, the article outlines that the CEO of Activision Blizzard made a bunch of random requests that a bunch of developers had to sink a bunch of time into. So, you know, it's not like a lot of these delays are to fix super core gameplay issues. If anything, I feel like all Overwatch 2 really needed to be is like polished Overwatch. Maybe I'm nuts, but I do think it should have been easier considering they were no longer starting from the ground floor. And I'm not saying the game developers aren't working hard. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying it seems to be that a bunch of CEOs and other people have been meddling in this and causing the delays. And it tends to be if the delays aren't being called for by the people that know a lot about developing and testing the games, they tend to not result in the best product. Obviously, I am hoping that I'm wrong, but that being said, it just kind of seems like a situation where we've been waiting forever for this thing and when everybody's like yeah a lot of the stuff you've been waiting on isn't that worth it it doesn't make me too optimistic the other thing that I think is a problem with this is overwatch when it first came out was crazy popular you know game of the year I think it's it's definitely iconic for people that were gaming around that time that being said I don't think it was anywhere near the cultural sensation of something like a minecraft or Fortnite, where literally everybody in their mom knew what it was so yeah you know, I do think every year, two years, three years that uh, are in between the announcement of the sequel and the inevitable release, that's definitely going to chunk into its popularity. You know what I mean? Listen, they announced the sequel in 2019, right? Since then, it's been delay after delay, and it's not necessarily Blizzard's fault that other games that have been delayed haven't been that great. But, you know, it doesn't help boost a bunch of excitement for the game. And if you want to see how that decay of popularity is really playing out, all you have to do is look at the fact that, you know, the Twitch viewership for Overwatch has kind of fallen off a cliff. There was a huge spike around the time that the sequel was announced, and ever since then, it just really has hasn't been doing that hot. Obviously, I know Twitch numbers aren't the gauge of like how well a sequel is going to do, but that being said, it's very evident that, you know, people's palette for Overwatch hasn't necessarily expanded or stayed consistent ever since they announced Overwatch 2 is coming out. If anything, it's literally at the lowest it's ever been. And listen, like I said, I'm not saying people live streaming the game means, oh, the sequel's not going to do well, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure they're going to sell a lot of it. I'm talking about if the internet community itself isn't very excited for the game, doesn't seem to be particularly interested interested in the original anymore and more and more time is going to pass between the inevitable release of the sequel and this the logical conclusion is that more people are not going to be paying attention to overwatch then than there are right now and it's not like the current trend is on an upward trajectory and listen like i said i hope i'm an idiot i hope i'm wrong you know i'm not gonna pre-order overwatch 2 because i've been burned enough with pre-orders but yeah if it's a good game i'm not gonna be like afraid to spend money on it and buy it. I just think in its current situation, I'm not necessarily sure if the hype around it that they could have had at one point is like going to be as good as it could have been. Because I mean, let's say it releases like 2023. Like we don't have a, a date yet, right? The game came out in like May of 2016. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're honest here and we take a step back, six years in between releases is a long time. That, you know, is basically the same amount of time that you have between, like, a, a, a GTA, a Red Dead. Iconic levels of gaming, and I think that the first Overwatch was insane, don't get it wrong. Like I said, it started this whole YouTube thing I do. But I can't sit here and pretend that, you know, six years later, as many people are thinking about Overwatch as, like, I am. And that's if it magically released tomorrow, you know? I think another metric that you can kind of use to see how popular something is is like a reddit and listen i'm not saying it's the end all be all but you, you put everything together it's going to show that it's not as popular as it used to be but if you look right now you know there's 3.7 million people that are on the overwatch subreddit that are members right but only 1.5 thousand people that are active the ratio is not too hot a lot of people were into overwatch at one point but it's not like they're booming anymore and I know there's going to be some comment warrior like, oh, yeah, you, yeah, well, your channel ratio is not good. Fair enough, man. But I, like I said, I hope I'm wrong, dude. I really hope that Blizzard comes out. They drop Overwatch 2. Everyone plays it, you know. Oh, oh, man, this is the greatest game ever. I hope I look dumb. I just can't say that all these things together in more delays makes me confident that the game is going to have the best chance at success that it could have had. I'm not trying to hate on it. I, I hope it doesn't do bad you know i like overwatch i'm just saying i feel like they're making a mistake by delaying it further and further obviously it's too late they've announced the sequel now i think the best course of action if they could get a time machine like marty mcfly and go back is to just like not announce it as soon as they did but uh it's out there now and i do feel like a lot of uh the pressure on overwatch 2 to succeed also is coming on to blizzard and activision because of how expensive the overwatch league has been they can't really abandon overwatch because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people with a lot of money riding on the line for the Overwatch League. The idea was to replicate the approach of the NFL or NBA, which have passionate local fans and team owners willing to spend money for clout. The Overwatch League created and sold franchises for $20 million or more to billionaires like New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft. I know $20 million is not a lot of money to a billionaire, but that being said, you put all of the teams together, you know, it's a pretty hefty sum, and I still feel like billionaires would not be too receptive to their $20 million investment not performing well. The fact that Twitch viewership is immensely down, less people are talking about the game, I'm sure doesn't make people that are heavily invested in the Overwatch League too happy. So I'm sure there is an amount of pressure on Blizzard and Activision to come through with Overwatch 2 and bring a bunch of popularity back back which is why i think they announced it as soon as they did you know they were really hoping that it was going to be out 2020 2021 obviously covid put a damper on that but uh i don't know i do feel like that's where a lot of this pressure potentially could have come from i'm not an insider i don't know but i just feel like if the overwatch league is performing the same as overwatch which logically you know makes sense that they might be getting a little bit of pressure to release overwatch 2 bring some popularity back something Activision doesn't break out Overwatch League revenue, it's in a category of revenue labeled other that includes the Call of Duty League in a European distribution business. Revenue from those sources grew 6% to $687 million last year. I'm not going to sit here and say $687 million is not a crap ton of money, right? But if you consider the fact that that's Call of Duty League, a European distribution business, and the Overwatch League, it's not that much. And let me explain, right? $687 million as it says they don't really break it out so these are completely hypothetical percentages here but we're going to use 687 million let's say in a hypothetical world that call of duty league this european distribution business and overwatch league each take up you know a third of this 687 million for all i know it could be all 687 million are from overwatch league i don't know a very unlikely there's probably a reason they group these together right but let's say that they're a third just for this example that would mean that overwatch league is bringing in 226 million dollars a year once again not too shabby quite a hefty sum but if you consider the fact that everybody paid 20 million dollars to get a team hypothetically and there's 20 teams all right if you split that 226 million 20 ways which is saying that you know Blizzard doesn't get a cut, no money gets reinvested into, like, the, the players, equipment, player salaries. This is purely just saying if you split it evenly amongst the 20 teams. 
11.3 million dollars a year now that's a lot of money you're like boom if a team's 20 million you make 11 million dollars a year after two years it's paid for all right but then you start to look at how much it would actually cost to run these esport teams now i'm not even gonna calculate like oh oh they need somebody that does accounting they need somebody that's a coach they need somebody to you know manage the players i'm not including any of that i'm only gonna do player salary right let's say that an overwatch league team team has you know seven players there's six people that actively play you have one alternate you know that that's pretty common i would say in overwatch league let's say you pay all seven of those guys the league minimum so you don't pay any star player a substantial amount of money right i guess that's fifty fifty thousand dollars a year ish so that breaks down to about 350,000. You're like, well, Ryan, come on. It was 11.3 million. Now I only have 11 million dollars left. I'll take that. True, true, you do have 11 million left, but you also forgot that the government is going to come in and want to take this little thing called taxes, you know? And uh, I think the corporate tax rate is about 21%. So 21% of the 11 million you have left puts you at 9 million. Remember, we've only just paid player salaries. We've only paid taxes. Now you're also going to have to consider the fact that, like, not this season, but for the first seasons of the Overwatch League, you were having to fly them around the world to play these games i think they used to play in the town on top of that you're gonna have to pay like a lot of them have a team doctor a lot of them have a team psychiatrist a lot of them have a staff in charge of making them meals they have a team house where they live all these things start to add up right and listen you're still like whatever hypothetically let's say all that only costs an additional two million you walk away with seven million a year not too shabby however you also have to deal with all of that and for the first three years of your investment you know you're not actually making money because you had to pay 20 million to get the franchise that 20 million isn't necessarily including any of the costs we just talked about all that comes out of pocket so you know you're kind of in a situation where sure you might be making a couple million dollars a year let's say six seven million but you're talking about billionaires to which six seven million really isn't that much money and on top of it if they would have taken that 20 million from 2017 and parked it in the stock market they would have blown out like blown out of the water whatever it, they've made sense and that's not an insult to the overwatch league it just have have happened to be during a period where the stock market has gone crazy but that might be why a couple of these guys are putting a little pressure on for overwatch to uh get a little bit more popular maybe release another game because you got to consider if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for them to run the business then a lot of the value would come from the fact that like oh i can sell my overwatch league team for a lot more money than i bought it for like an nfl team owner does right but if you believe what i believe which you don't have to you know which is that overwatch is becoming less popular less people are talking about it less people are playing it you know i it just doesn't seem to be getting more popular, then I don't really know how the value of your franchise would go up if less people are watching the sport. So it's kind of a situation where these guys are like, look, all right, it's kind of a lot of work to make this money that I'm making. On top of it, you're kind of underperforming what I could be getting somewhere else for like no work. So we have to get this kind of rolling so that I start to make more money. The franchise starts to increase in value. And that might have put a lot of pressure on Activision and Blizzard to kind of rush the announcement. You know, that's just a game theory. I'm not an insider. I'm not an expert. That's just uh, a little bit of my thoughts about it. Anyways, guys, like I I said uh, I really hope I'm wrong I hope Overwatch 2 blows me out of the water blows everyone's expectations out of the water goes down as the greatest game of all time I'm just not feeling too optimistic let me know in the comment section down below what you guys thought if you did enjoy you should press the like button comment down below and subscribe I'd really appreciate it and while you're down there doing all that turn on notifications I mean you might as well I try to post every day and I'd really appreciate y'all subscribing if you want to help me out more I'll go ahead and put a link to the intro song down down below along with a link to my podcast the scuffed cast or of course you could use code scrubby at g fuel checkout it's a great way to get a discount on g fuel the best energy drink for gamers and help me out at the same time so like i said use code scrubby 
And the last link you're gonna find down there in the bottom of the description is a link to my merch store. So go ahead, head on over there, get yourself a t-shirt. I would very much appreciate it. You know, not to be too biased or anything, but it's actually the coolest merch to ever exist. And if you get it, you know, no promises, but potentially there's a genie inside that'll give you three wishes. No guarantees, it's probably not gonna happen. But uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that'll do it. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.